can you mention your name and where you're located and the type of long arm that you have? Uh, I'm Rita Radel from Rochester, Minnesota. I have an HQ Avante Pro Stitcher with a 12 foot table. I started out with just the Avante and then about a year and a half ago, upgraded to the Pro Stitcher. How do you like it? I really like it. I, my husband from the beginning wanted me to have the Pro Stitcher and I kept saying, no, we can't afford anything like that. But my arthritis and my hands and neck was bothering me and he talked me into it. Best thing we ever did. Yeah. Yeah, I have the uh, I have that Innova and it has the uh, the computerized parts on it, uh, but my box, which is the brain, just went out, so I'm having to send that in to get repaired. It's a mess, and I, all I'm thinking about is whenever I purchase one, all the different ones I looked at, and one of them was the handy quilter with the pro stitcher. <laughs> I am. Um have had my motor for some reason go out twice on mine, which is extremely, extremely uh, unusual. I mean, I haven't had it that long, but they, they've been wonderful. My rep has been wonderful. Um, my Y axis went out at the same time. <laughs> it's kind of been crazy, but they, I mean, this time in a week, they had it up and running. They knew I had a lot of customer quilts to do. They were excellent with it. And then not this fall, but next fall, my plan is to upgrade to a Forte to have a longer throat. Yeah. So um, I, do, I do a lot of king, king size quilts. So okay. to have that longer throat will help. Okay, I see. Um, for me, it's difficult. I'm so short and I have the the um, I have the bar at uh, the level of my rib cage um, just because I was also using it for free motion quilting. Um, yes. But I'm thinking about moving it back down uh, because I'm too short to get to see where to line up the points at the very back yeah. of the I'm quilt. I'm five two, and my husband finally moved mine down, even though they don't recommend it. And I, it was funny because I told my rep, and she said, "Actually, we just moved mine down too," because I was noticing with the pro stitcher, I was moving my head upwards all the time. Uh -huh. And then I would have such neck and shoulder pain. And so now since we've moved it down, the pro stitcher is straight on. So that's oh, that's cool. nice. That's real nice. Um, so you do work during the day through Monday through Friday. Is that correct? That's correct. I've worked for the Mayo Clinic uh, since the COVID. Uh, at first was furloughed and then brought back, but we've been working from home ever since we, we may gradually go back but the COVID's on the rise so I don't know you know when that might even even be um but I, I work 40 hours a week and then I try to have my full-time business here and then I do lectures and trunk shows to guilt oh gosh so busy. that is busy yeah uh, that's a lot to do yeah, I, I was doing I'm sorry what I said that's a lot to do it is, you know, I what I have been doing memory quilts and t-shirt quilts for the last few years, and I've just decided when I get this last memory quilt completed, I'm going to phase out of everything but the long arm quilting for those because I don't have any time to do anything for myself anymore. Yeah. And um, I need to do some more. I want to do some new panels for my lecture trunk shows. Plus, I want to do things just for me and my family. So I need to get back to that. So what are your trunk shows? What do you, what do you, what shows do you, I mean, what do you talk about? Um, I do one on panels. And okay. I call it panel plethoria, what to do with all those panels. And I talk about the digital and then the original type of panels. And then I talk about how to straighten them out. And then I have about 35 quilts that I've made um, and different things that I give them examples of what they could do, how they could, how, you know, it's so straight and they, it's so important they straighten those panels first. And a lot of people don't realize that. So yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I bet it is. So, it has uh, to be difficult right now, like going to talk to people with everything that's going on. Well, I had lost all of my lectures last year, which uh -huh. was fine with me. With, I mean, if I couldn't work, 
full time. I shouldn't be traveling around a lot of people. I didn't feel like so that worked out real well. Um, and then I do have a lecture next month to a guild. And then uh, I've got one booked for next year already. But I'm, I haven't been pushing it at yeah. all with any guilds because I'm just so nervous about what's going to happen with COVID. So I may be another year or two, but it gives me time to build everything up. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would. And hopefully I'll be retired then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I went to a quilt meeting uh, recently and they had a speaker, but all of the chairs were side by side like they used to be. And it was a little bit uncomfortable um, to be that close, you know, to someone again. Um, so it's it's a it's a challenge, I would think, right now. But the nice thing is the the long arm quilting. You know, you don't have to go anywhere. <laughs> right. I actually belong to a long arm. Uh, group uh, online, long on long on quilting group. The lady is from Commerce, Texas. She uh -huh. has it, and then it's once a month, and it's only thirty five dollars a year. But that oh, wow. lets me be with some long arm quilters that way. It's open to any long arm quilters. And then I belong to the guild here, which I'm. It's not long arm. It's just regular uh, quilting guild. I'm very very involved with them. And yeah. They just went back to the church this week. I wasn't able to go. Um, the church had said we didn't have to wear masks, but the speaker was very nervous now with the uprise. Yeah. So we did ask everybody to wear masks. And I heard there was quite a few that attended and they were, all had their masks on. And Yeah, I think that quilters are uh, willing to wear a mask. You know, I don't think that I haven't ran into very many that are really mad about it or anything. Um, yeah. So, um, tell me more about, do you have, whenever you, ex your, how your process goes of accepting your quilts, do you have them online or do you have, is it local or do you have mail in? Um, I haven't had any mail in, um. I have done some for people in other states, but I was going that way or they were coming this way. So uh -huh. it worked out for us. Um, I have mainly local, a lot of them are the guild. My name's really starting to get out there. Um, I give them the choice usually if they wanna to come to my house or I go to their home, whichever their preference yeah. is. This home that we now live in, we moved in a year ago. They can come into the garage and then there's no steps which yeah. I really like because I have quite a few that are in their seventies and eighties. And I worry about those women Yeah, uh, and they appreciate being able to come in right through the garage, right into the studio. So that works out really well. Um, I try to do a two week turnaround is what I tell them. A lot of times I can get it done a lot sooner, but when your machine goes down, then you get a little frantic. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Last time I had 13 waiting. Oh my gosh. I, I really worked hard and I got caught back up now. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a little bit scary. I'm lucky that with this machine that when it got, when it went down that, um, I'm just doing uh, charity quilts. So I, it, since it's a new machine to me, I asked uh, for them to give me a whole bunch and uh, I got two done and then it broke on me. So I had a total of six. <laughs> So I, they don't, yeah, they it, don't it, care it, too bad. <laughs> no, charity people, the people you're doing charity quilts for usually are pretty good. I do quilts of valor. And then I did a couple for a friend of mine the other day. She's well known for making lots of charity quilts and pillowcases and that. And she asked me to do a couple. So I did a couple for her the other day. And then I, I did. You know, when you first get started, I think so many of us volunteer to do so many charity quilts. Oh, yeah. And then yeah. you get inundated. And so I pushed myself back to six a year. And so I do two for Quilts of Valor. I told her I would do two for her per year. And then I'm leaving the other two open. Uh, yeah. So if our guild has another place they need to do some charity quilts for or if somebody contacts me, then I have that too. So yeah. I had to finally just pull back because that's. I couldn't get time to, to get things completed that I needed done. 
Yeah, for for me, it's the housework, you know, that gets gets put behind. <laughs> yeah, I um, our children are are grown and married. We have six grandchildren, but um, the three oldest that live here, one's getting married in just a few weeks, and and so we don't see them too much. The other two are working, and then the three youngest are about a little over an hour and a half away from us. So yeah, um, the house stays pretty good. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah, now, I in home helps. Yeah, I will. I have uh, I have two boys. And one is 14 and one is 12. So everything they touch yes. kind of goes on the floor or, or you know, they, they help. They clean up and do stuff, but still. Um, but one day they'll all be gone and then you wish. I'll you be so it. sad. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough. It is tough. <laughs> yeah, it is. So I like to ask people if they have any tips or tricks about the long arm quilting as far as it, as far as any of it goes? Um, I did write down a few. Um, one thing you hear all the time when you first get started with quilting is to take 15 minutes each day and practice. But I think also what is also important is to take a little bit of time out of your day and watch one or two short videos on YouTube. Yeah. Um, you know, and some people say I don't have time, but if you're sitting there if you have a laptop or your phone and you're watching TV on commercial, put on your headphones, watch it. You can stop it when your show comes back on. Yeah. I, I watch a lot of videos. I have learned so many tips and tricks. One thing, um, let me see if I can find it here. Is this here, Adam's from Adam's So Fun was showing this. It's the, the curved owl, owl. Can you see it? Oh, there, where, yeah. Where it's curved. Um, he was showing like when you have to rip out stitches uh -huh. to get it going and then just use the curved one. Oh my gosh, it is so oh. much quicker and you don't take a chance of ripping or grabbing your fabric at all. This was my most recent tip from him. Um, I see people a lot of times ask, what do you do with your scissors? How do you get them to stay on your machine? And I was up in uh, Northern Minnesota doing a guild lecture and I went to this one store, and this is magnetic. Oh, and so wow. I wrap it around my cords around the front, and then it just seals. And then with it being magnet, then the scissors just stay, stay right on. So that's another quick one. Um, one thing that I went to a class uh, two years ago, Kim Bruner had one, and uh, she had Beth, Mary Beth Crapel there. And she was talking about when you get to the um, bottom of your quilt and you have the pins and you, you take the pins off and you base. She said, don't take all the pins off at once. Only take about six or eight, base that area, then take another six or eight and base it because that way it keeps the quilt straight. And uh, that has really, really made a, a big difference for me too. Uh, another thing I do is I, when I get to the bottom, I always, if I have a small quilt, a lot of times I'll quilt, but anything from twin up, I face all the sides and everything. I do too. So when I get down to that very bottom piece, I base on the right side and then I do the unpinning like Beth, Mary Beth showed. And but I leave the very last pin on the right side, and then I go back up and I base the the right side, and then I take that pin off and finish up that edge, and that helps keep that right edge straight also. So that has has been a big uh, thing for me. Um, I use zippers, okay, uh, and that's mainly due to my arthritis in my hands and that. Um, I know we have a lot of people out there that has arthritis. I've seen that on, on, on the yes. and they suffer with that. Um, I had tried the red snappers, uh, but even with using a hair dryer, I still had issues with my hands hurting so bad. Yeah, that's such a squeeze. Yes, I had to pull my hands apart, my fingers apart with my other hand. Oh. So that wasn't good. Yeah. Um, so I saw on Mary MK University, I saw about the zippers and now I have four sets of those. And I like that because I have several going set up ready to go at a time. And um, 
Now, do yeah. you pin do you pin the zippers on, or do you based? Do you take? I do it with my machine. I based okay. It. Okay. Yeah. The the front and the back the backing I do, and then um, I pin the top at the very you know that one end. Yeah. Um, yeah. But and then that's where I just uh, barely uh, at the end of it I just unsnip a little bit, and then I can just pull that fabric, and it just comes right off the zipper. Oh yeah. So it, it, it makes it really fast. Um, another thing that I have trouble with with arthritis, and I've heard of others, is it's sometimes hard to roll the the backing on the bar and to get tight. Yeah. Um, and my one of my reps that I used to have, she came and she said, "Why is it this tight?" And I just literally with my hands, I couldn't do it. Yeah. And I figured out literally just probably in the last month, I've now started rolling my back bar first with my backing. And I get that and then I, I redo it to the front. And on the, on the left side, sometimes I have to hold on to that edge of that backing to keep it straight. And now I can get it tight every single time. But it's, it's a little, I think that would be a good course for somebody, uh, a speaker to do um, a video of yeah for our for arthritic people that are long arm quilting yeah because there there's so many of us out there that enjoy doing it but you even see where some just quit because they say they just can't do it anymore and there's got to be other people out there with tips yeah on how to be able to continue to do it I I actually bought another hand wheel too so I have one for the back and one for the front to to help me. Um, with that piece and then the other thing that I also use I don't know if you've seen them is the mini uh, battery operated seam rippers have you seen those oh yeah, yeah like a razor and they're nice because that helps me just to get that little stitch loose and then yeah. I, can, I can rip it but it's funny because I went to two years ago I went to our first guild retreat that we had and there was 40 women and all of them started hearing me use it. I was had made a mistake, and I started ripping that uh, seam out, and nobody could hear my my little battery operated, and they were all laughing. But then the next year when we went, you could hear a lot of women <laughs> using those little <laughs> seam rippers. They're and like, "That's a good idea." Here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it really does work good. But uh, I just try to be practical more than anything. You know, not all of us have a lot of money and even if we do we want to save so, yeah um, I try to watch a lot of videos and learn tips along the way yeah that's how I learned was through uh videos anything else no that's that's it on that yes. Yes. and I think that okay all right well I, this has been fun I've been um I'm part of your group uh through Facebook yeah and um I saw the other day, weren't you on Leah Day? Did you do an interview with Leah I did. a while back? Yes, I did. That, yeah. When I was watching my daily videos, I ran across yours. Yeah. So that, that was really good to hear. Yeah, it's and been a you, while. I've been watching. One thing I don't do right now is any custom quilting. And if I do custom quilting, I don't think I'll ever do it for customers. Yeah. And I don't do any ruler work because I haven't had any chance to learn. So after I get done with the memory quilts and t-shirt quilts part of my goal is at least learn it on pro stitcher yeah um, so i can start having some fun yeah with i don't use the pro stitcher as i used to edge to edge right now so i want to learn a lot more of the techniques for that yeah um there's another group that i'm a part of and it's called the long arm league have you heard of that one i have taken one um i think they had like some classes and I think it was last year I took one. Yeah, and um, she there's it's like a monthly uh, subscription. There's two different levels, and I'm on the lower level. But you get one, sometimes two pantographs per month, and then you also get to be part of the group. You know, um, it's like another, you know, like our group, but it's more just long armors because they have to pay. Oh. 
you know, they have to pay to be part of the group. And on the Facebook group, it's long armors and people that are interested in long arms and people that are interested in getting their quilts long armed. So okay. it's a it's a wide variety. But this group is just long armors. And so like you said, like you have your groups where you just talk to long armors. It's kind of like that. But uh, wow. I enjoy it. I'll have to check that out again. I haven't thought about it for the past year. I'll have to go back and take a look at hers. Yeah, she's real nice. I enjoy I enjoy all of, all of the parts of the group. Uh, today we had a meeting with um, three. I had a meeting with three other long armors, and um, it's kind of like a goal group. So you work on your goals together, and um, I think that's always nice to be accountable for. Um, and then there's, um, on the Facebook group, there's a mentorship. Have you seen that? No. Uh -uh. And you could be a mentor to someone or you could be, you know, somebody could help you along if you were stuck with something. Um, yeah, and that's one thing when I first started, you know, you get, you can find videos and that on the steps on how to set up your machine and, and take it apart and if your bobbin goes out. But what I actually did, because I was still having a hard time remembering it, is I typed up everything that they said to do. And yeah. then I have it on a clipboard and I can go back to it. Oh, and that's nice. I have uh, a friend of mine, she'd done a couple of quilts. She lives in Texas and she comes up here in the summer. So last summer she came up and I told her, I said, I won't charge you if you come and you help me for the day. I said, yeah. I'll show you how it works. And so I had that clipboard and we did her quilts. And afterwards she says, you don't charge enough. She said, your customers need to come see. We have no understanding what it takes and how long just to set a quilt on the machine and get it ready. Because it could take an hour, hour and a half depending yeah. on the size of the quilt. And people absolutely do not understand that that piece I, I have I have this one customer she forgets every time and she'll base her backing and batting and top <laughs> together every time and I'll say she'll call me back before and I say okay now unbase it <laughs> but, you know I just laugh at her she just cannot cannot remember they're so used to the other way when you hand quilt you have yeah. to do that so yeah it's, it's hard and it's hard for them to understand the extra fabric we need yeah, the, the on the sides and the back, back yes. And, and so my friend said if they saw what you did, they would understand. Yeah, um, why you I think so. You yeah, so, you know, it's fun. I, I love working with the customers and, and teaching them. And, and I use Glide Thread mainly. Uh -huh. I try to use King Tut. I think you can use any, but I don't have the patience to be worrying about the tension all the time. Yeah. So I switched to glide and I, the 40 weight, and I use that almost all the time. Um, I have more and more people wanting to variegate it. Yeah. So I have picked up some Omni V and that seems to be doing pretty good, pretty good. for me. Um, um, you know that. I haven't gotten into like the invisible thing. Well, uh, you know, Glide now, I think, has um, a variegated. Um, oh, I'll have to check into that. Yeah, you go to uh, HAB plus dash, and then um, it'll H-A-B plus D-A-S-H, and then it'll pop up, and then you can look at all of their, their threads. And I've gotten a few different types, and I've liked everything I've gotten, but I, I understand where you are with, if I set the tension for something, I want it to not have to mess with it. And um, right. that's how it is with glide. It just, well, it works really nice. It glides. Right. When I got my machine back two weeks ago, um, the first time I, I used a Magnifico. Oh, yeah, Magnifico? Yeah, I, I variegated. And uh -huh. all of a sudden, I started having... A long stitch and then regular stitch and a long stitch and I thought it was the thread but I had just done a t-shirt quilt and you know how they have all the different things on those t-shirt quilts and I yeah. will do the stitch for those 
So I thought, you know, I wonder if I need to change that needle. And yeah. that's what it was. As soon as I changed it, then the machine was working fine again. Yeah. Uh, but I, I learned with a t-shirt quilt, you, you definitely need to change that needle. Yeah, there's a lot going on. Well, How is, about you know, and I, I just, I watched a video just lately because um, I tried, I couldn't even see to get the invisible thread in there. Yeah. But I tried different types and I have so much trouble but it was the small, small spools. And I did not realize to use small spools, you need to get the horizontal spool holder. Oh. The way, the way that the thread goes, um, the thing I was watching, they said, you need that horizontal thing to put the small spools on and then you won't run into the problems. Yeah, I didn't know so that. I'm, I'm eager to try that. I wanna buy the horizontal and see if that would help me. but. I don't know what's going to help me to see to be able to put that invisible thread through that needle because <laughs> yeah. that is just a struggle. I, I really like to get to use it because my customers have asked me for it. Yeah. But right now I have to tell them no. Yeah. Have you used it at all? I've only used it for um, hand stitching and I, I have a big spool of it from Glide or from Habdash and I haven't I haven't tried it on my long arm. I'm I might try it on this one if I can't get the thread to work right. Um, in that green area is she likes all the colors on the back to be the same, all the thread on the back to be the same. And so I want to keep it on the same in the back, but I don't want to have white thread on that green. So I was thinking about using the uh, clear or uh, try green on top and cream on the bottom and just cross my fingers. <laughs> now I only use the same colors on top and bottom. Do yeah. you use different? No. Okay. So I've always <laughs> been told that yeah. when you do that, that, that you need to let your customers know that you may see a little bit of that bottom thread on the top. Is that correct? Yes. And that's what I'm gonna, it's gonna, it's really slow stitching. So, and it's straight lines mostly that be very slow because it's applique that I'm going around. So I'm thinking that if I, I'm going to try it. And if I see peekaboos coming through the top or the bottom, I'm just going to go straight for that monofilament to, okay. to go on top and then cream on the bottom. Um, you and to let me know how that works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's I had a test. I brought me a t-shirt to do today and she said, oh, well, I'd like a different color on the bottom. And I said, I can do it, but yeah, so that you know, and she said, no, let's stick with one. And I, I said, okay, it's, it's totally up to you. But I, I, I always tell them, I said, it's kind of like hand quilting. You'd only use one, one thread. So take, yeah, I've got plenty to choose from. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, she's real easy to work with this lady. And so, um, she, this is more of a challenge for me that I'm trying to do and I want it to look sure. I want it to look really good when it's done with like we do with all quilts but right. this one is special yeah. for some crazy reason I really like it <laughs> I think it's really pretty yeah. <laughs> well you know it, it, there's always challenges um, yeah with that and that the mono the monofilament I really really like to learn to use but I have been told also or I read it that uh, if you're doing a baby quilt, you shouldn't because it's more nylon. Uh -huh. Where if it comes loose, it could get wrapped around a baby's finger or something. Oh, yeah. So I, I have heard that more than once, but they say on the regular quilts. And then I think also, is it you want poly? Is, it, is that what they say? Because there's some kinds that melt. Oh, yeah. In the dryer. I can't remember what that is, but yeah. I can remember hearing about that. Yeah, I can't remember what I got, but I, I did get the the one that comes from the Glide company, um, and I have a good size okay. spool of it, so I'm, I'm ready to try it if the other stuff doesn't work. But I had one more question for you, and that is, what type of batting do you prefer? I sell three different types. Uh -huh. I have warm and natural. I have Hobbs 8020, and then I have uh, Hobbs wool. 
Yeah. Um, and th that's from my customers asking for those three. Uh -huh. um, so I really listen to my customers. That's just like on my pricing. When I first started, I, I just charged a flat fee and I don't know how many of my customers come. It must be popular in this area, but they say, why aren't you charging us for your thread? Yeah. And you wouldn't think a customer would dare say something like that. Yeah. And I said, well, I never even thought about it. And they said, you need to charge us for thread. So we worked together and they came up with the price. Oh, that's I, nice. I didn't choose the price and I've not had a customer complain. And yeah. And so we go with 250 per bob. And, you know, I know it gets asked a lot on the groups and it gets kind of get kind of harsh. <laughs> kind of heated. Those, those yeah. <laughs> when, when they talk about it, you absolutely shouldn't charge it. <laughs> I just always say my customers came to me. I didn't go to go to them on this. They, yeah. they said I needed to. They came up with the price, so that's that's how we do it here. But I think I think it's like when people ask about how much you charge. I think that's that depends what part of the country you're at. I think so. Yeah. I mean, every area is a little bit different, so I always try to encourage people to check around their area. If they yeah. want to be more in tune with that than what somebody's doing four states away. Oh yeah, definitely. Mm. Well, that's all I have. Do you have anything yeah, else? I have. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll let you go. No, and it was great to talk so. to you. I think that's Okay. Thank you, April. You're welcome. Take care. Bye-bye.